Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. And in today's episode of the Maven Nation Photography Podcast, we're going to be talking about how night sight works on Google's Pixel cameras. There is a number of fascinating philosophies, technologies that they talked about in this article that came out in November of 2018. I know it's been a while. Suffice it to say, we're probably going to see more of this kind of thing in future cameras. I thought it's very instructive for interchangeable lens camera companies to figure out why and how they are making such great cameras into smartphones. It's an important strategic part of the battle. Now, as a side note, if you're struggling to learn your camera and you're looking for a great tutorial, check out my large lineup of camera instructional videos. I'll put that link in the description and we will get you up to speed in no time. I also recently launched my own ND filter line. So if you're looking for a high quality ND filter, these are designed to reduce the step of needing color correct in post. Check those out as well. So when we're talking about the Pixel smartphone and the camera built into it, there are earlier versions, the one and the two. Most of what I'm about to talk about is from the version three and on. When it comes to image noise, we're talking about the grain that you see in low light situations Smartphones are at a huge disadvantage because we're talking about something that's about this size when compared to even a Micro Four Third or an APS-C or even a full frame camera, those cameras have a huge size advantage. And I published a video recently talking about why larger sensors have less noise. Check it out if you're interested in, in a really nerdy video, but suffice it to say in a given environment, they have more photons hitting their total surface area than a smaller sensor. So the advantage for low noise is with the larger sensors, but what we're seeing out of the Pixel smartphones are incredible low light images. How in the world are they doing it? And I thought it was amazing. It's a really great article, but they were very careful to, first of all, define that there is a limit of light that this works in. And the range that they're going for is really about 30 lux, that's typically what you would see in a low light restaurant, down to 0.3 lux, where you start having a hard time seeing your car keys on. They're not saying this is going to work for every situation, but the amount of exposure and the color they're getting out of it is truly outstanding. How in the world are they doing it? The article goes to describe that they had an app that came out in 2014 called HDR Plus. HDR Plus essentially takes multiple exposures and combines them using something called computational photography, which has also been around for several years. Computational photography is when we're giving permission to a computer to take different parts of different images and combine them together into a new composite. It is basically composite imaging. In the case of HDR+, this is being managed for the sake of higher dynamic range. We're trying to get details in highlights, we're trying to get details in shadows and a single exposure typically can't do that all in one shot. So it takes multiple exposures, takes those details and combines them into a new image. This is something that's been around for quite a while. The two major hurdles that the team recognized in regards to longer exposures and stacking them together are first number one, shutter lag. The Pixel phone, and I didn't know this, as soon as you open the app, it starts a cyclical buffer that is taking anywhere from nine to 15 images. And by the time you push that shutter button, it's going to take the most recent images and present them. And that's pretty awesome. I mean, if you remember the beginning of point and shoot cameras, there was always this delay when you push a shutter button and it would click like a second later. We don't see those on Pixel phones anymore because of zero shutter lag. Now, when we're talking about longer exposures, like we see in night sight, they can't use zero shutter lag because first you have to compose, then you have to focus, and now we're talking about multiple long exposures. So there was another problem there and they go with something called positive shutter lag, which means the camera starts taking images after you push a shutter button, which is normally how we expect cameras to work. Now, the reason this is good is because it requires the user to hold the camera as still as possible. So one of the strategies that they've employed is optical images stabilization, which will increase your shutter speed to about one eighth of a second if you are holding the camera still. But there's a huge problem with this. Sometimes you move and sometimes your subject moves even at one eighth of a second. So they have this problem, okay, we can use longer exposures, but things are moving. 
How do they solve it? After image stabilization, we are introduced to something referred to as motion metering. Suffice to say, where it's basically using the camera to determine whether you or your subject is moving and the shutter speed is adjusted accordingly. Now, if it sees a subject that's moving around, it will use a slightly faster shutter speed, if it sees a subject that's standing still, it'll use a longer shutter speed. Something that's interesting about motion metering is it's also measuring the movement of the phone. For example, if you pin the phone against the wall or you're using it on a tripod, it will recognize this and use six one second exposures. If there's a little bit of movement, it's going to use 15 one fifteenth of a second exposures, which results in a total of one second exposure. And then it goes into an alignment part of the processor, which is very computing heavy. It's gonna take a lot of lifting. And there's an analysis of aligning in stacking these images together. This is fascinating because from what I got in the article is it's able to recognize different parts of different frames and stitch them together and still use the whole to reduce the total noise. Absolutely incredible in terms of computational photography, but remember, this is very processor heavy and it, it's not exactly the fastest thing. There's that camera company, Light, that made the, like the L16. I think this is really where somebody got aggressive with it. And I, I don't know where they're standing now, but last I read, it was taking like 40 or 50 seconds for the computer to stitch these images together. Suffice it to say, they're taking multiple images they're stacking them to reduce noise and they're throwing away parts that are blurry. That is the heart of the matter when we're talking about night sight. So one question you might have about how does multiple images reduce image noise? There are some cameras that will do this actually. You take multiple exposures and it averages and it can cancel out the noise based on what is common in the frame versus what is not. It's sort of like taking a long exposure over multiple frames in combining them together. Now the scientists at Google also recognized two other major problems because they wanna give these cameras essentially superpowers. The first is white balance. In very low light situations, there may be a single light source that is not, you know, we don't know what the, the temperature of the light is. So what they did is they taught a computer, this is artificial intelligence, and they went through by hand color correcting multiple images to teach it what a correct white balance should look like in many given circumstances. The last part of this is something referred to as tone mapping. The scientists at Google also wanted to do something beyond the power of the human eye, which is an amazing light capturing device, really. The eye is amazing. But we have a limitation in our cone cells, in our eyes, that in very low light situations, we have a problem of distinguishing color. So if you go outside at night and you look around by the moonlight, everything's gonna kind of have this blue tone to it. You can look at the grass, it doesn't look green. The truth of the matter is, if you do a very long exposure with a camera, you can capture light even though our eyes cannot. So they wanted to try to apply this and give the Pixel cameras essentially a superpower, the ability to see color in low light. So the way they do this is they simply apply an S-curve to the exposure, and this brings out the colors in these longer exposures. Take all these philosophies and tactics together, and we now have this incredible feature called Night Sight. It's going to continue to get better. So this also opens a number of interesting ethical questions when computers are stitching together multiple exposures and creating a brand new image that didn't exist in the first place. For example, is that considered a real image? Could you publish that in a, in a newspaper and say it's real? And then on the other hand, these cameras are able to capture color at night that we can't see with the human eye. So is it more accurate if it has color or is it more accurate in monochrome? I, I don't even know if there's a good answer for that. The lesson that should be taken from this is that the smartphone camera manufacturers have implemented a number of fascinating technologies. They are bringing the fight to the long established Nikon, Canon, Sony, and they are beating them badly. So what needs to happen is the major camera manufacturers need to start looking at artificial intelligence. They need to start looking at features that include computational photography. And there are some cameras that have some of these features in there, but it's nothing close to what we're seeing in the smartphones. So I hope you guys enjoyed the Maven Nation. If you like the podcast, I would love your subscription. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. If you're looking for a great course to learn your camera, check out one of my crash courses. Or if you need an ND filter to take long exposure check out my Maven ND filters. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.